they actually did studies where they did consecutive autopsies of the next hundred people that came into the morgue, okay? And they took out their thyroid gland and they analyzed it for oxalate content. They found that even in infancy, your thyroid starts to accumulate oxalate. And they also know from other studies that oxalate makes you hypothyroid or you know, we still, you know, there, there is a, an autoimmune condition called um, Hashimoto's thyroiditis. And, and with it, there's kind of this bouncing around stuff with, with the, um, um, how that autoimmune disease is affecting how your thyroid functions. But at any rate, it's damaging to the thyroid for it to be there. And, and it is just like, you know, Goodness knows we've heard about cholesterol, you know, and, oh, you don't want to have too much cholesterol and it's going to, you know, collect in your blood vessels. And when you get older, it's going to be a big problem, right? That's what, what we generally say. Well, oxalate is just like that. The older you are, the longer you have had to accumulate it. Now, people are doing an incredible job right now because they're drinking spinach, spinach smoothies and doing beets and nuts and seeds and all these kinds of things. So they're probably accumulating oxalate in their body at an astonishing rate. Now, why does it collect in the thyroid particularly? Well, most people know about there's a relationship between the thyroid gland and iodine, right? Well, iodine is also one of the things that crosses the membrane on those SLC26A transporters. Now, there are some other iodine transporters, but some of the iodine transporters are in this same family that also moves oxalate. So it, it matters. Um, and uh, is it safe to say that if you're getting more oxalate, then you're probably not getting enough iodine? Or does oxalate yeah, bind well, to iodine? It, it may, it, it, it very well may affect it because, again, if these are exchangers. And I think the best way to think about this is like a, you know, at those grand old hotels when they had the big um, uh, revolving entrance mm -hmm. where you just push it and it goes around. But let's just say it was like that, except there was a rule that the only way that you could get in is if somebody were coming out at the same time, because that's mm. how these transporters work. Interesting.